Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and InvestmentImmigration.com. Today we're going to be discussing the latest developments in immigration news. There's been a lot of developments since our last live stream. Uh, if you're interested in reading further into these developments, please go to the news section of our website. Well, Colin, there's been two express entry draws since the last live stream. So the first one was actually an all-time low. The CRS score was 413. And then yesterday, there was also a draw on June 28th, and the score was 449. So right. what does this mean? Well, first of all, overall, we've seen uh, about 51,300 invitations issued for the first six months, uh, over 16 draws. Obviously, considerably more than last year's entire total of around 32,000. Uh, what happened on the recent draw, and that, and, and that perhaps is puzzling for some, but for those in the industry, you'll be able to understand uh, one month of no draw. Uh, you've had many applications being submitted week by week. So the pool has grown combined with the fact that major changes on June the 6th uh, to the express entry uh, point system, whereas, uh, for example, if you have a sibling in Canada, uh, you now will receive 15 points for having a sibling. Uh, if you have a pretty uh, high French ability, uh, you'll receive a point, uh, 15 points, uh, and possibly even 30 points for individuals who have high French, which is a seven benchmark, uh, as well as uh, an English competency of five. You could get 30 points for your uh, French and English combined. Uh, so there's a lot of individuals who are receiving either 15 points addition for siblings uh, or 15 points for proficiency in French or even 30 points if they have the combined. So you've got this number of candidates in the pool who are able to capitalize. That has the effect of pushing up the number uh, for the growing pool. Uh, but as we saw in November of 2016, when the previous major change took place, you will see an, uh, a calibration that takes place and a, an ease in the number uh, on the CRS score. So it's pretty likely that you're going to see a, a, a gradual uh, fall in the number uh, once all of this has been calibrated and uh, is, is stabilized. So expect to see uh, going forward, uh, we're going to see and we can expect to see uh, perhaps upwards of 30 draws for the, uh, balance, for the entire year, so another uh, perhaps 15 draws. Uh, overall, we anticipated about 75,000 plus invitations, perhaps considerably more. Again, we've talked about this uh, in our uh, summary uh, of what took place under Express Entry in 2016. The, uh, the article is on our website. What we're talking about today is also on our, our, our website under news articles. So that covers the express entry, and that's what it, people can look forward to going forward. Perfect. So this brings us to citizenship. So there's been some major developments in the Canadian citizenship legislation. So what are these changes? Well, you know, the citizenship uh, file was a controversial one uh, in that uh, uh, it was uh, the remnants of the former Conservative government which put in place really harsh measures uh, to become a citizen. It, it revoked and, and, and moved the pendulum backwards uh, considerably compared to where it was previously. Uh, so what the Liberal government came in on a platform of revising uh, the Citizenship Act, uh, as a Canadian is a Canadian, uh, was the motto that uh, Justin Trudeau had um, advocated. And they had planned to bring this law in place by last summer uh, for July 1st, 2016. That didn't take hold for many reasons. There's a parliamentary process. It was complex. There were modifications that were uh, put forth by a private member in the Senate. Uh, so it, it wasn't smooth sailing. Uh, but finally, uh, the law was debated. It passed Parliament. It went to Senate. And then again, Senate made modifications. All said and done, this law has now been approved on June 19th. What's important to understand, and, and many people are not clear on this, it is not fully in force. Uh, the government will put the major provisions, uh, as we outlined even before the law came in force, we were aware and we had an in, in, intimation that this was going to be put in on a staggered basis. So the, the heavy lifting will be done in the fall of, of 2017, this coming fall. What you will see, uh, 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 what took place on, I'm sorry, on, on June 19th, 
uh, is that there is uh, no longer a revocation uh, for dual citizens who've committed serious crimes. You, you no longer have a, a revocation of citizenship uh, that can be done uh, uh, under the former act. Um, there's no longer a need to have an intention to reside uh, in Canada, so that really doesn't have a lot of play, um, except that when the other provisions come in the, in, in the fall, this particular provision will, will have uh, a play. And what's interesting, effective June 19, is that minors, and this was a provision that was put in by a private member in the Senate, uh, that minors can apply for citizenship, for example, if their parents are, are denied uh, or other circumstances can arise where a minor uh, can apply for citizenship uh, with special permission. Uh, so that provision has now in force as of June 19. The most important provisions that most individuals will be concerned about is, is what will come in uh, in the fall of uh, this year. It'll come in by order and council, and there's probably about five important provisions. Uh, the physical presence rule. Previously, you had to have four years and six years. Uh, now you need to have three years or 1,095 days in the previous five years. Secondly, what will come in in the fall, and again, you can read about this particular provision and this whole summary that we covered on our website under news articles uh, for 2017 June. The second in, in provision is that you need to file income taxes for each of the qualifying years. Uh, what's repealed, the third point uh, that comes in in this fall, is that you no longer have to reside 183, 183 days in each of the qualifying years. You previously had to have this provision under the former government's uh, Citizenship Act. Um, interesting, you now have, again in the fall, you'll be able to count your temporary status in Canada. So if you're studying in Canada, you're working in Canada, up to one full year. So if you've worked, uh, let's say, two years, studied two years or longer, the government will credit you a one-half day for each full day that you've uh, been in Canada on a, on a valid temporary status, not a visitor status, of course. Um, and you can count up to one full year towards the three-year requirement, towards the 1,095 days. Uh, and lastly, uh, the uh, proving your language abilities, uh, the, the age bracket that, you will, uh, that applies to having to just uh, prove language uh, is, is now moved uh, to age 18 to 54. Previously, the government in place had the Citizenship uh, Act such that anyone between the ages of 14 and 64 would have to prove their ability in either one of Canada's official languages very harsh provisions for many reasons, uh, but that provision will come into effect in the fall of this year. Uh, and, and the last provision, which was very controversial, uh, is that there's no longer, the minister no longer has the power, uh, will no longer have the power uh, to uh, revoke uh, citizenship based on false representation or fraud uh, or knowingly concealing material, uh, material uh, information. Uh, so that provision, uh, such that only the federal court uh, can revoke citizenship uh, for any of those grounds. So that will be the timeline that people can expect the new Citizenship Act to take hold. Again, the heavy lifting or the most important provisions will take place uh, this fall. And uh, then there's the uh, other provisions that come in place now, and one provision comes in place next year. Great. Well, that moves. Um, the next topic would be with regards to information and communications technology workers and the province of Ontario. So there's been some exciting development. You know, Ontario is very uh, active in their uh, immigration nomination program. They have an excellent stream, uh, and there is a, a call out right now for uh, the what we know as information communication technology professionals. Uh, that's a, a glorified word to 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 describe uh, all of the computer professionals, the higher end professionals. Uh, if you are a candidate in that field, uh, and you have an express entry profile in the system already the government of Ontario is going to be actively looking for candidates and you don't even need to have a 400 score which is previously the way these particular targeted occupations were to work. Uh, so Ontario very active in the express entry system. What can you do really there's nothing what an individual can actively do to stand out. I use those words, we use those words, how to stand out from the crowd. 
Uh, what you want to do, however, and I think it would be very prudent, uh, is, is resubmit your application in the pool. So what you want to do if you are uh, uh, an information communications technology uh, professional uh, and you are already in the express entry system or you're not, well, get your application in. Uh, but if you are in there, it would be strategic to re pull out your application, withdraw it, and resubmit it again. No penalty for you to do that. Um, and you'll have a, a, a fresher date uh, when your application is in the system. Uh, and again, what's interesting is that the government of Ontario is looking for these candidates, and they're not, they're not requiring a minimum score of 400, which was the case for, for most of their other involvements when they're particularly looking for candidates uh, with specific uh, occupational sets. Great. So this brings us to the Trump effect. So when Trump was elected earlier this year, there were reports that the Canadian government website was flooded. Uh, you know, it was, we had so many universities getting... Our site went down. Our site did go down as well. There was a lot of interest from Americans. But what is the case now? Well, you've got... Uh, it's, a tempered, it's a tempered response. Uh, what we are seeing is that the numbers of Americans may not be as great as one had thought. And, and that's probably... Uh, what is consistent with most of our observations anyways. Uh, what you're seeing is that the citizenship applications, the number of people who are applying for Canadian citizenship, uh, who are American nationals, uh, the numbers in the first period of 2017, it's about 400 applications per month. And if you kind of look at where that was last year, 2016, you had about 264 uh, American nationals applying for Canadian citizenship. So if you do the math, it's about a 50% increase on citizenship. So it's not negligible, it, it's pretty substantial, uh, but it's not the droves that we uh, were hearing that people said is taking place and, and news media outlets were, were going out and, and uh, claiming that this is what's taking place. If you look at the high from uh, this particular analysis, the number of applications for citizenship was from Americans to Canada. It was in 2011, you had this kind of peak period. It was about 564 citizenship applications per month uh, on the part of Americans. Uh, so from 2016 to currently, you're seeing a 50% increase. Who knows if the current policies in the Trump administration, the immigration uh, ban that was put in place has now been partially reinstated. As of today, uh, the government, uh, the, uh, the White House will be putting in place policies that will affect uh, six uh, majority Muslim countries. I don't think that particularly will have an effect on the number of Americans applying for citizenship. I think American citizens uh, who have this interest have already uh, are, are already on a wait and see, see how the Trump policies play out, see how uh, everything uh, unfolds in the States. So we're seeing an increase, probably will continue to see an increase, but not in the astronomical numbers uh, that people uh, seem to have thought. Okay, that's great. So moving on to postgraduate work permits. So this year the processing time has been greatly reduced. Well, that's, a, that's an important development, you know, because uh, the pathway to Canada for many uh, is a, a period of study uh, who, that, you know, individuals who come to Canada, of course, uh, for many reasons, and, and perhaps some of the uh, Trump policies, individuals who would normally want to study in the United States, of course, you have Canada really uh, coming to the forefront now uh, m for study purposes. So uh, it's important because one of the elements uh, on, on an attraction for someone coming to study in Canada is that once you graduate, you can apply for a work permit, an open work permit. So we call it a post-graduate uh, uh, work permit. And if you go to a qualified school, uh, study for a period of eight months, uh, it's got to be an approved post-secondary institution, uh, and you apply within 90 days of graduating, uh, you're going to be able to get into the Canadian labor market, and that's quite uh, you know, attractive for many. Uh, that application last year was taking 17 weeks. We had all kinds of difficulties. People were falling out of status. We had to uh, do various maneuvers to retain their statuses. Uh, and so now that process has 
taken, is taking much less time. Uh, we're hearing that it's taking six weeks. Uh, we're seeing that it's taking six uh, weeks or so. Uh, so this is a really great development for individuals uh, who are in that particular category. Again, uh, coming to Canada, studying Canada, uh, really uh, an interesting um, avenue for many individuals uh, to become Canadian permanent residents later. So our last live stream mainly covered the global talent stream. So this program is now open as of June 12th. So Colin, what's, so the stream is open, what's going on right now? Who's it? Well, you know, what, we're getting a lot of people saying, how can I qualify, right? We're get, you're getting, you're seeing it, we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people saying, I want to qualify for the global talent stream. Really, it's not about qualifying for the stream. This is really open for employers, uh, for uh, uh, really for certain types of employers in Canada, obviously major employers. So this particular program is very interesting if you are it's interesting if you're a candidate as well because we work with candidates uh, we work with employers in the industry and so we do recruit for employers we are recruiting and so if you are an employer uh, and you have uh, uh, you know a, a high need to employ uh, information technology professionals either you will be in a category a uh, employer where you're working uh, with one of the major partners in Canada uh, this is a very set list. This particular description, all of this is on our website uh, under Immigration News for June 2017. We cover this in great detail. Uh, so either you're in Category A, you're an, um, an employer that could have access to working with a major partner that's designated by the Canadian authorities, or alternatively you will be an employer that uh, will uh, need to employ one of certain can candidates uh, certain uh, professional technology workers. Now, it's 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 certainly you, you have to qualify for it. It's not you know there's there's major rules. We cover them. You, you've got to have a major investment. There has to be transfer knowledge to Canadians. Uh, there's got to be major job creation, not only for the foreign worker but for Canada. So this has to be a large project in which you're bringing in foreigners to help Canadians. Um, so it's highly specialized in demand occupations in the sciences, technology. Uh, you're dealing with, as I said, uh, professionals in the software and, and, and uh, IT field. The takeaway from this, of course, is that on June 12th, uh, bringing these workers into Canada much faster. It's no longer, m most of them are LMIA exempt. Uh, the work permit processing times are supposed to have service standards of 14 days. Um, in, in some cases, you've got work permit exemptions where you have candidates coming in who will be working for less than 30 days in a year. Uh, so it's a really important development for the very large employers in Canada. Um, and it's not a question of just applying as, a, as an individual coming to our, uh, to our uh, firm and saying, I want to qualify for this. The takeaway from all of this is if you are an employer, we have excellent recruitment programs. We're licensed recruiters in Canada. Uh, and we do have wonderful programs that we help recruit and handle the immigration work permit process. If you're an individual, uh, of course, we can also help you because we can, we can situate you uh, and put you in touch with Canadian employers. Uh, we have an excellent program where all of our clients receive our employment search consulting through our in-house recruitment firm. Uh, so we can help individuals either on the employer side or on the individual uh, applicant side. So that's really the takeaway, much quicker to come to Canada and get a, a temporary work permit. Moving on to our last topic for today, uh, the Quebec Investor Program. Well, this is a controversial program. It's always been controversial because every period, every time this program comes into force, you have, I would call it, uh, lobbyists and stakeholders who, who rise up and say how Quebec is, uh, is, is skirting the system and individuals uh, apply in the Quebec system. And the, the reality is, and it's all known and it's, it's, it's such that individuals come to Canada, apply for permanent residence. There are many documented who apply through the Quebec Immigrant Investor Program and don't stay in Quebec. They end up moving to Vancouver uh, or other areas of BC or in Ontario. Uh, it's, it's a continual drama between those who object to this. Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult uh, to 
uh, prevent. Uh, individuals who apply for Canadian residence may qualify under Quebec's Immigrant Investor Program. Uh, it's a limited program. This year they're taking 1,900 applications. Uh, 1,330 of them are from China. Uh, and the balance of 570 will come from the rest of the world. It's quota based. So you need to have a spot. Uh, you need to be working with a facilitator. Uh, you need to be working with a professional who has access to quota. And this quota will go quickly. Uh, we, are, we do have quota uh, from uh, some of the major uh, facilitators in the program. So you need to be getting your application inside this window. But it's not just that the program is open from May 29 of this year until next February 28. Really, it's a question of having a quota spot. And you need to move very quickly uh, in order to secure your quota. Obviously, if you're a candidate that has a net worth of $1.6 million uh, or, or, and you have management experience of two years in the previous five years, and you will be uh, agreeable to investing $800,000 interest-free, or you can finance that. There's excellent programs where you can liquidate as low as $220,000. Uh, you would be an ideal candidate. There's other criteria. And so, you know, this could be an interesting program for you. Um, barring the controversy that this program represents uh, for people who are in British Columbia, people who are in Ontario, uh, it's, it's a program. We obviously try to encourage our clients to stay in Quebec and over time I think we're seeing that. We're seeing a, a, an increasing number uh, of individuals uh, actually living and staying in Montreal, living in Quebec. So uh, hopefully the program continues to evolve and the benefits of the program, we've, we've written about it and it's documented. Uh, so it's, it's uh, here to stay, but stay tuned for our next a discussion we will be talking about in part on a new program that we have uh, uh, been uh, discussing uh, internally and it's a wonderful program for business investors uh, who want to secure uh, residence in Canada uh, and may not qualify for some of these programs. So uh, stay tuned for that but that covers our, our discussion on the Quebec uh, program. Perfect. Well, that concludes all our topics for today. Thank you very much for joining us. If you're an employer, please do contact us. We're licensed recruiters. And if you're an inv individual and you'd like to come to Canada, please go to our website, immigration.ca, and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with regards to your options. And as always, please do like us, follow us on social media, and we look forward to seeing you in the next live stream. Great. Great. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I think we'll probably have our next live stream uh, quite likely in two weeks, possibly three weeks. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.